right, shall we get started? So uh, I'm Sebastian Beswick. I work as an iOS developer at a really small company called Domestic Cat Software uh, just down the road in Abbotsford. Um, and uh, we do iOS and Android consulting. Um, today we're going to be looking at auto layout. We're going to see what it is, why you should use it, and how it works. And it's going to be quite a basic uh, overview of auto layout. So take yourself back to 2012, before the iPhone 5 was released. GDA 5, Sharknado, users, it was a wondrous time. And not least because every single iPhone that had ever been released was at a logical resolution of 320 by 480. So in effect, every iPhone screen that you could actually deploy on was the same fixed size. So if you're creating apps for a piece of hardware that has a fixed screen size, then laying out your views would be easy, right? You could just hard code the, uh, the frame of each view. Now, this is fine if you're happy to disable rotation on your apps and run them entirely in either landscape or portrait mode. Um, and if you do want rotation, then it would be entirely feasible uh, to come up with a separate design for each orientation and then uh, switch as necessary each time a rotation occurs. <coughs> now that there are five different iPhones with four different screen resolutions in popular use, and that's not even mentioning iPads, all of the new devices that Apple are probably going to release into the future, uh, we'd be better off figuring out a, a smarter way to do our screen layout. So, Auto Layout was first released uh, for OS X, uh, and it shipped with Lion in 2011. It was made available to us as iOS developers uh, with the release of iOS 6 and Xcode 4. Um, it's still being regularly updated and it's definitely not going to go anywhere soon. Now we're not actually forced to use auto layout. We can turn it uh, on and off as we like in Interface Builder. Um, before auto layout, developers used the Springs and Struts layout system. Uh, and really the only reason to use Springs and Struts now uh, is if you need to deploy on iOS 5 or lower, which is hopefully uh, definitely none of us. <coughs> so auto layout's a system that lets you lay out your app's user interface by creating a mathematical description of the relationships between the elements. Um, we define these relationships in terms of constraints, either on individual elements or between sets of elements. Um, using auto layout, we can create a dynamic and versatile interface that responds appropriately to changes in screen size, device orientation, and uh, localization. So by using auto layout, uh, we can ensure that the views in our apps are correctly sized uh, so they look great no matter what device uh, or orientation we're running on. Um, and I think that the, the, the correct uh, use of auto layout is such an essential skill for iOS developers uh, that it's really worthwhile spending the time it takes to become uh, fully familiar with how it works uh, and how to fix it when it doesn't work. So, auto layout constraints are the fundamental building blocks of auto layout. Uh, now, constraints are rules that determine how elements are laid out on the screen uh, based on how they interact with uh, other elements on the screen. Uh, constraints are applied to views, uh, and we can add, remove, and modify them at runtime. Uh, when our views are ready to be laid out by the layout system, uh, the auto layout constraint solvers run. Now, this constraint solver considers all constraints simultaneously, and it attempts to lay out each of our views such that each constraint in the hierarchy is satisfied as best as possible. <coughs> now, constraints are things that are inherently very easy to understand uh, for both developers and designers because they're expressible in a very simple language. For example, uh, if we have a view that looks like that, um, you might say that you wanted it to be 335 points wide, 50 points high, 20 points from the left of the screen, and 20 points from the top of the screen. And each of these uh, descriptions are called constraints. Now, there's two very basic properties of constraints, and that's their attribute and their constant value. Uh, 
Um, uh, an SLA constraint uh, attribute can be any of these values up here. Uh, so there's left, right, center X, etc. Um, and these uh, attributes describe which aspect of the views that the constraint should operate over. The constant value of the constraint determines the value that should actually be applied to the attribute. So in our example here, um, we say that for, say, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the leading constraint here, uh, we say that that constraint's constant is 20. Um, and that's because that view should attempt to position itself 20 points from the leading edge of its super view. So what we're saying here is that constraint has an attribute of leading and its constant value is 20 because it should be 20 points uh, from the edge of its super view. Now, notice that I said uh, leading rather than uh, left. Um, this is because in left to right locales, such as anywhere uh, English is spoken, um, left and right are exactly equivalent to leading and trailing. Uh, but in, in uh, right to left locales, uh, so for example anywhere Arabic is spoken, um, left is actually equivalent to trailing and right is equivalent to leading. Now this isn't going to actually matter for us uh, if we're just laying out views that should be displayed the same uh, regardless of the locale that we're running in, such as uh, image views. Um, but it is something that we need to consider um, if our app contains globalizable text within labels. Um, and it's something that we definitely increasingly have to keep in mind uh, as our apps become more uh, globalized. Um, this, this is uh, actually even more pertinent in iOS 9 because of uh, uh, the operating system's updates to localization. Um, obviously, Apple places uh, a high importance on globalization and accessibility <coughs> in apps um, and encourages uh, all iOS developers to do the same as well. So when we make our layout constraints, um, we very specifically consider um, the constant and attribute properties of the constraints every time we make one. Um, now, there are a few more properties that we can set on constraints. Um, these are less commonly modified than the constant and the attribute, uh, but they're useful often enough that it's worth having a firm grasp of them. So the first one of these additional important properties are the multiplier. Um, and I think this is uh, most easily explained uh, by looking at examples. So say we've got a canvas that looks like this um, with two views, a blue view up the top there um, and the red view down the bottom. We've given the blue view a constant width and a constant height of 150. So the blue view's height and width is never going to change. And on the red one, we've given the red view a constant uh, height of 150, so that view's height is never going to change. But we've asked it to be uh, equal widths to the blue view. <coughs> so what we're saying here is um, the red view's width should always be the same as the blue view's width, or more generally, we can express that as uh, y becomes x. Um, so if we set the constant on our equal widths constraint to 50, uh, you can see that the red view grows by 50 points uh, in X. So what we're saying now uh, is the width of the red view becomes the width of the blue view plus 50 points every time, or Y equals X plus C. Um, it's probably starting to become uh, obvious where the multiplier slots into this. Um, if we go and click into the detail view in that constraint, um, and set its multiplier to 2, for example, then what we're saying is the width of the red view becomes twice the width of the blue view plus a constant of 50. Um, and that's basically how the, uh, the multiplier property works. <coughs> I think the next important property is the priority property. Um, and this describes how important it is that that, uh, that, that layout constraint is actually uh, satisfied. So remember that uh, the constraint solver uh, attempts to place views such that every constraint is satisfied as best as possible. Um, so in some cases in our apps, we're going to have uh, sets of constraints that conflict with each other. Um, when this happens, if two constraints do conflict with each other, uh, the constraint with the highest priority level is always going to be satisfied before ones with lower priority levels. <coughs> 
Um, the last important property on constraints are the relation. So in the example we just looked at, uh, we used the equality relation between the attribute, uh, th as the attribute between those uh, two views constraints. Um, we're also allowed to use inequalities such as less than or greater than. Um, and by using this, uh, we could specify a view of constraints on a view such that it should grow to fit its content, um, but always ensure that its trailing edge is uh, separated from its super view. And we're going to see an example of that later. So this is the golden rule of constraints. Uh, you always need two constraints, two independent constraints per direction. So you need two independent constraints in X and two in Y. Now there are a number of ways we can achieve this. Uh, the first way is we can specify uh, a leading constraint, trailing constraint, and top and bottom on our view. We could give our view fixed width, fixed height, and a leading and top constraint. Um, or we could specify equal widths, equal heights, and uh, that it should be centered to other views. In addition to this, uh, our layout constraints have to be sufficient. Uh, so that means that we have to specify enough constraints that all our views have enough information uh, to figure out where they should be on the screen. Uh, and our constraints should also be non-conflicting. Um, so that means that each of the constraints should be able to be satisfied in conjunction uh, with every other constraint. Um, and as we looked at before, uh, if any constraints can't actually be mutually satisfied, um, then one of them will be broken and that'll be the one with the lowest priority. <coughs> so I'm going to have a quick demo now, uh, just a quick look at um, how we actually can create some constraints in Interface Builder. Um, this will be quite basic. Uh, I'm just going to turn off mirroring. Oh, sorry, turn on mirroring here. <coughs> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag a UI view uh, onto our blank canvas. I'm going to call it red view so we can see it later. And I'm going to give it a background color of red. Now, if we crack open the simulator and run this, um, noticing that we haven't actually applied any constraints to this view yet, can, what you can see is that the view has been drawn um, with its frame being unchanged on the screen. And if we rotate this, uh, we see that the view's frame doesn't change, even though uh, the screen's dimensions have changed. So the uh, end goal of this is what we want is uh, to create layout constraints so that each of the edges of this view are always 20 points away from uh, each of the edges of its super view. Now, there's a few different ways we can create constraints in Interface Builder. Um, probably the most commonly used one is by control dragging. Um, there's a few different ways you can control drag. You can uh, just select this view, and then I'm holding down control now, and you can just drag to any other view on the canvas, in this case, the super view. And when you let go of that drag, you'll get a list of, uh, of uh, constraints that you can add. You can also control drag to uh, this hierarchical view up here, and you can select any other view in your hierarchy. Um, and when you release, you'll get that list. Uh, similarly, you can uh, control drag from any view in the hierarchy to any other view on the screen or in the hierarchy. Um, you can also go up to the editor menu here, and you can pin constraints on. Uh, what we're going to do right now is just Control drag from red view to its super view. We see this list of constraints. Um, if we hold down the Alt key, you can see that that changes uh, the list of constraints that are shown. Um, what that's changing there is leading, leading space to container is changing to leading space to container margin. 
Um, I suggest that you never pin to container margins because you're going to want to change them most of the time anyway. Um, so by holding down shift uh, on this view, we can select a whole heap of constraints. And as soon as we let go of this view and tap out of it, that's going to create our uh, auto layout constraints for us. Now you see that um, our constraints have just been created uh, exactly where the view's frame is at the moment. Um, but the constraints aren't actually what we want. So we want this view to be positioned uh, 20 points from each edge of its super view. Uh, so there's a few ways we can change this, these constraints. Um, the first one is if we select that view and then click over into the size inspector uh, up the top right here, we can see a list of all the constraints that are applied to that view. Um, and we can edit them in here. So we can hit the edit button on one of these constraints. You see that it lights up on the screen. Um, and we can change its constant. And that will be updated in real time uh, as soon as we click out of that. Um, you can also get to that same menu by clicking on one of the constraints. Um, and it takes you to this detailed menu where you can change uh, more detailed properties of the constraints. So we'll go ahead and change that to 20. You can get to that menu as well um, uh, through uh, the size inspector by double clicking on one of the constraints. And the other way you can get there is this list of constraints over the left hand uh, side of the screen there. We can click directly into the constraints there um, and edit them. Um, there's another button down here. I don't know if everyone can see. Everyone probably can see the bottom of that screen there. I'll just drag that up. Um, if we go ahead and delete all these constraints, um, we can also click on this little TIE fighter icon um, and uncheck constraint to margins. And this is a much faster way of uh, adding constraints in if you already know what they should be. Um, we can go add four constraints. And we'll see that our constraints have been added and that they're all the correct value, um, but that the frame of the view is incorrect. Um, and also we notice that there's this little uh, yellow arrow uh, up the left-hand side of the screen here. Uh, now this arrow indicates that there's warnings or errors uh, in our layout constraints. So if we click into that, um, we can see our warnings and errors. Um, so if you have a warning such as a misplaced view, that'll appear here. Um, you'll also see uh, if you have any conflicting constraints, um, those constraints will be listed in this view as well. So this is your first stop to uh, debugging constraints that you make in uh, Interface Builder. Now we're not gonna have time to look at uh, conflicting constraints. But we will look at this misplaced view. And what this is saying is expected, so for red view, expected x equals 20, actual x equals 164. So it's saying this view's frame isn't actually where I expect it to be. Um, if you click into this warning icon here, it lists a few ways to fix it. The first way is update frame. And what that says is set the frame in the canvas to match the constraints. Um, and what this really means is, uh, Xcode will presume that your constraints are correct and it will recalculate the frame of the view uh, so that the constraints are satisfied. The second option here is update constraints and that's kind of the inverse of update frame. So what that means is uh, Xcode will presume that your view's frames are correct um, and it will update the values of the constraints so that they match the current frame. Um, in this case, because we just added the constraints and we know that they're correct, we're going to hit update frame and fix misplacement. And we see that uh, we see that the view is constrained exactly as we expect it uh, with a 20 point margin to each of the super views. And if we run this in uh, the simulator, uh, we can see that this is as we expect. There's 20 points to each edge. And if we rotate this, uh, the view's frame is recalculated so that there's still 20 points to each edge. Um, so that's a very basic overview of creating constraints in Interface Builder. Uh, we're going to head back to the slides now.
And the next thing we're going to look at is intrinsic content size. Now, when we constrained that last view, uh, we gave it four constraints. So we pinned each of its, uh, each of its edges to uh, the respective uh, superviews edges. Um, and from this information, the layout engine was able to figure out uh, both the red view's size, so how big it is, and its origin. Um, and this followed the normal rule of auto layout, which is that you need at least two independent constraints in uh, each dimension. So we had two in X, uh, the leading and trailing edges, and two in Y, the top and bottom edges. Um, but some views actually inherently contain information that allows them to calculate their own size. Uh, for example, uh, UI labels, which is just a, a view that uh, contains text. Um, to display text in a UI label, you have to specify first the font, which includes the font size, um, and also the text that you want to show. Um, and once the label has this information, um, <laughs> it can use it to calculate uh, how much space a certain amount of text uh, will actually take up on the screen. So we say that the label has an intrinsic content size. Um, and if a view can calculate its own size, then all we need to do is constrain it uh, so that the layout system can figure out where its origin should be. So in this example here, I've got a label with only two layout constraints on it. Um, its top edge is constrained to the top layout guide, and its leading edge is constrained to the leading edge uh, of its super view. You can see that if I change the text that's in its label, uh, it, it, the, the label recalculates its own size. Um, and that's obviously because the label knows the text it contains and it knows its font. Um, it can figure out how, how big that text is going to be. Um, so it only needs enough additional information to figure out its origin, uh, which it gets from those two constraints. Um, if we change the font so we make it a bigger size and then hit Command Enter uh, to request that the view recalculates its frame, uh, you can see that it's correctly able to do that. Now, because we set the number of lines on this label to one, which is the default, uh, the label is going to continue uh, to grow horizontally uh, in X um, until it can fit all its content. Um, it's never going to grow downwards onto another line. Um, so if we add a lot of text like we have here, uh, the label is just going to continue to grow off the edge of the screen, um, which is pretty ugly. Um, but it's particularly ugly if there's another view in between uh, the edge of the screen and the end of the label, uh, which is something that you commonly see uh, as a, a chevron in a table view cell. So what we can do to fix this is use auto layout constraints. Uh, the most likely solution we're going to use here is to add a trailing constraint to that, um, that label and that chevron uh, to separate them. So the constraint that we've added here um, basically says constrain, constrain the trailing edge of the label uh, to always be greater than or equal to eight points away from the leading edge of the chevron. So you can see that this constraint has restricted the size of the label um, and then the label responds by clipping its text based on uh, whatever clipping mode we've given it. So you can reference constraints uh, that you've created in Interface Builder via IB outlets uh, in exactly the same way that uh, you would a normal UI view. Um, you can just control drag uh, from the constraint to a property uh, in one of your source files. Um, then you can go ahead and edit any of the properties of the constraint uh, at runtime as you like. Now this is actually pretty useful in a lot of more complicated cases, um, but if you're creating a complicated viewing code, then you're probably going to want to dy dynamically generate uh, your constraints in code as well. Um, we do this primarily via format strings written in the visual format language. Um, visual format strings are the cornerstone of the grammar of uh, programmatic auto layout, uh, which is the visual format language. So here's a basic example of a format string. We've got uh, an NS string literal. Um, containing two buttons, both in square brackets, separated by uh, a hyphen. Now, in uh, 
visual format language, uh, views are represented by putting their name in between a pair of square brackets, so button one and button two are obviously views. Um, and spacing between views is indicated by uh, hyphens. Uh, we use a single hyphen for a space of eight points, um, or we can use a number between a pair of hyphens for any arbitrary spacing between views. We use an H or a V followed by a colon to indicate uh, whether we want the constraints to be applied horizontally or vertically. Um, and if we want a view to be constrained to its super view, we use a vertical bar. Um, because this, uh, this bar represents a view as well, um, it can be placed directly to another view, uh, directly next to another view like we have there. Um, and this indicates that both of the buttons should be positioned, their leading and trailing edges should be positioned uh, exactly next to their super view. So that string that we've got there uh, is exactly the same as this string here, but this is just uh, a bit less concise. So we're saying that the leading edge of the button one, of button one uh, should be pinned exactly uh, zero points away from the leading edge of the super view. <coughs> so let's deconstruct this format string up here. Uh, the first thing we've got in that string is the h colon, which tells us that uh, the layout constraints we're generating uh, should be horizontal constraints. Um, then we've got a couple of vertical bars on either side that indicate uh, that the things next to them should be constrained to the super view. Um, uh, followed by uh, between button one and the super view, uh, there should be a spacing of 20 points. Um, similarly, on the other side of that string, um, there's a spacing between button two and the trailing edge of the <coughs> super view of 20 points. Um, and in the middle of that string, button one and button two are connected by a single hyphen, which means that there should be the default space of eight points between those two views. Now, if these buttons are added as subviews of a view that can't resize, such as a view controller's view, um, the buttons are going to grow as big as they need to be to satisfy their constraints. Uh, so we end up view with views that look something like this. Um, it's not necessarily exactly what we would expect. Um, but those views do actually uh, exactly uh, fulfill the constraints that we made. Um, if we wanted them to also be the same size, uh, we could add another constraint saying that um, the width of button one should be equal to the width of button two. <coughs> um, we represent constraints uh, in code using instances of the NS layout constraint <laughs> class. Um, we usually can uh, create these constraints uh, using the class function uh, constraints with visual formats, sorry, with visual format, um, which follows that uh, definition up there. Um, we've already talked about the first parameter, the visual format string. Uh, so let's take a quick look at the remaining parameters, uh, options, metrics, and views. So the options parameter is a bit mask. Um, and it describes the attribute and the direction of each object in the format string. Uh, so how each object should be aligned with each other. Um, in the example that we just saw, uh, we told the layout system that the two buttons should be laid out horizontally. Uh, but we didn't actually specify what should happen if those buttons are different heights. Um, so in this case, uh, we might set NS layout format align all center Y uh, so both of those two buttons will be centered with each other in Y if they're different sizes. The next parameter is a dictionary of metrics. Um, and this is a dictionary of constants that appears uh, in the visual format string. Um, the metrics dictionary's keys are the string values that we use in a placeholder string. And its values must be uh, NS numbers. Um, we use this metrics dictionary so that we can, we can change uh, constraints, uh, constraints constants at runtime. Um, so we might decide that we need the spacing between the two buttons um, to be editable or changeable at runtime. Um, and so we could update our format string uh, to look something like this. So we've said, um, we passed in the metrics dictionary up the top, which says the button space should be eight. Um, and then we've, uh, we've used that as the spacing between the buttons. And so obviously at runtime, 
uh, we could represent that with a variable and uh, change it however we like. And the last parameter there is the views dictionary. Now this dictionary is used to link the views in the format string to the view object that they refer to. Uh, the keys in this dictionary are string values that are used to refer uh, to views and the values must be the actual views that they're referring to. Um, so in our example with the buttons before, we'd create a dictionary that looked like this. So a dictionary of views, we create our two buttons and we say that any time in the visual format string where you see the string button one, we're actually talking about the view button one. Um, Apple have also included a, a macro uh, NS dictionary of variable bindings that accepts a list of views uh, and will create that dictionary for you. So rather than uh, creating that dictionary like we have there, uh, we can simplify that slightly. Um, and this uh, third line down there will do exactly the same thing. And that's something that you see quite often. So I think we're running short on time. Um, so let's just go through a, uh, a summary of the basic steps re required to constrain views using visual format language. Uh, firstly, we have to create our views and add them to the view hierarchy. Then we create a dictionary of view bindings. <coughs> Uh, we create our array of layout constraints using our visual format string um, and options or metrics if we're using them, which in this case we don't, um, and also our view bindings. Uh, then we add the constraints to the super view that they're operating within. Now, if we actually ran this code uh, as is, uh, we'd see this pretty horrific looking error um, in the debugger. Now the top line of that up there says uh, probably at least one of the constraints in the following list is one that you don't want. <laughs> um, and if you look through this list of constraints, you'll see that all the constraints we actually created are in that list. Um, but there's also some NS auto resizing mask layout constraints in there. Um, now UI views or UI view uh, has a property called translates auto resizing mask into constraints. Uh, and this is on by default. Um, when it's on, it creates constraints that fully determine the view's position. Um, and this means that any constraints that you create yourself are uh, likely to conflict with the automatically generated constraints. So if you ever see an error like this, um, and you also see uh, an auto resizing mask uh, constraint in the list of conflicting constraints, um, then you'll know that you've just uh, forgotten to turn this flag off. Um, and that's very simple. Um, it's just a property that uh, we can edit. Um, if you create your views in Interface Builder, um, this will be off by default. Um, I think we're out of time, uh, so I'm just going to skip through size classes. Um, and if anyone has a question, i um, very happy to take it now. Please also feel free to go and get some <coughs> afternoon tea. Um, please feel free to tweet me if you have any comments or questions or send me an email. Um, I'll also be around for the rest of the conference and uh, definitely come have a chat with me uh, at the conference dinner tonight as well.